When we started the course, we started with the consumer, and when we were interested in the consumption of the good x, we put x on the horizontal axis, and maybe a composite good like dollars of other consumption on the vertical axis. We then draw the budget constraint, where the slope of that budget constraint in this case is just equal to minus the price of the good x, because the price of the good on the vertical axis is equal to 1. We then found the consumer's optimal consumption bundle. And that told us that at this price, the consumer would demand this much of the good X. So we found the consumer's first point on the demand curve. On the curve where we have price on the vertical axis and quantity on the horizontal axis. So at the initial price, the consumer wants to purchase this much of x. That's one point on the demand curve. Then we could change the price of good x in this graph. And as we changed it, we could find different optimal consumption bundles and thereby trace out how the consumer's quantity demanded changes as the price changes. So trace out the rest of the demand curve. And typically, that would slope down and give us the consumer's individual demand curve. We can now add up all of these individual demand curves for consumers. So we take all the consumers that are interested in purchasing the good X, and we add up those individual demand curves that come from their underlying preferences. And when we do that, we get the market demand curve. So in the market for the good X, we get a demand curve that's just the sum of the individual demand curves of each of these consumers. So this will now be the market and we've derived one side of the market. We then moved on to firms and we said that in the short run firms operate on a slice of their production function where labor is the thing they can vary to produce output and that slice might look something like this. So this is the production function that holds capital fixed at its current level. We then did two-step profit maximization where we said you can derive from this the firm's cost function. The cost function will have kind of this inverse shape and from the cost function you can derive the firm's marginal cost function. So now we'll have the good x on this axis, dollars on this axis, and we can trace out the marginal cost of producing in the short run. Then we found that there's an average cost curve that starts at this point because there are no fixed costs in the short run and crosses the marginal cost at its lowest point. That gave us the firm's shutdown price. And we knew that below that, which we initially called the break-even price, the firm is not going to produce. So if the firm supplies nothing if the price is below that shutdown price. But once the firm reaches, or once the price reaches this break-even price, the firm is going to start producing where price is equal to marginal cost. That was the second step of two-step profit maximization set price equal to marginal cost. So now we have the individual firm's short-run supply curve. And we can add those up just like we added up demand curves for consumers to get the short-run market supply curve. So this will be the short-run market supply curve. And it's just equal to the sum of these individual short-run supply curves. Now we have a market picture where we have an equilibrium price that emerges. This equilibrium price at which this much will be produced in the market. If the price is ever above that equilibrium price in the short run, then producers are producing more than consumers want and producers will be stuck with inventory that they can't get rid of, so that will put downward pressure on price. 
if the price is ever below the equilibrium price, then producers are producing less than what consumers demand. And so firms realize they can raise the price and still sell everything that they have. So that would put upward pressure on price. So there are forces in place in that market that drive price to this equilibrium. And when the price reaches that equilibrium, a price signal is sent to producers that tells them how much to produce at that price. And that same signal is sent to consumers to tell them how much to consume along their demand curves. And at the equilibrium, the quantity that's demanded by all the consumers will be equal to the quantity that's supplied by all of the producers.